Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, so I'm not at my apartment right now, so I only have just uh, this laptop, not really like, you know, a tablet to kind of like write on. So, uh, but we can, we can still try our best. Um, so, okay, what, uh, what do you want to work on? Um, well, just to start, we can like review the concepts first. Okay. Um, um, and also since, you know, normally I have like, you know, multiple screens and stuff, but I only have one. So do you want to share your screen maybe? Okay, so let's uh, go to that first slide. I just want to see. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, uh, I guess, like each of these. So the common ion effect. What? Uh, so, okay. What that basically means is, let's say that you drop NaCl into a solution, right? It breaks apart into Na plus like cations and Cl minus anions, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's say that you add in like um, Na, like, like another like substance that has, all right, how about this? You add in then calcium chloride, like CaCl2. Now, common ion effect is that you're adding something with calcium, with uh, chloride ions to something that already has chloride chloride ions in it. So if, so it's going to work against um, like the breaking down of the calcium chloride. Mm -hmm. So that's like the idea of behind Le Chatelier's principle, basically um, like a chemical reaction will shift in a direction to return it to equilibrium. So like if you have reactants and products and you have too much products, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to shift backwards to make less products and more reactants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so buffered solutions. So that's, so a buffer is basically like combination of like, you know, like weak kind of acids or bases and they just help re resist a change in pH. So when we talk about acid base titrations, like essentially what you're doing there is let's say you have like, you know, a strong acid, right? And mm -hmm. like, have you ever seen like the experiment? It's like you would have like a flask or like a, I forgot what it's called, but like, like a cup kind of. Drips down, right? Yeah. And then you have the, um, that thing and that's so the the cup thing is basically let's say it's full of a strong acid mm -hmm. and then you have like that like thing i forgot what it's called full of like the strong base mm -hmm. and you drip down you know the base into the acid mm -hmm. and it neutralizes the acid and you keep doing it right on a, in a drip wise fashion and then if you measure like the ph like on the y-axis and on the x-axis, you measure the amount of the base that you add to it. You'll see that as you add the base, the pH will start to, start to start to increase. And then you reach this thing called the equivalence point where it shoots up. And in the middle of that equivalence point, you have equivalent amounts of acid and base. And then past that equivalent point, you're starting to have more base than acid. So if you have a buffer there, however, it's going to, instead of it starting to, the pH starting to rise as you increase that uh, base that you drip down, it's going to not rise. It's going to be like kind of flat because the buffer acts to resist the pH change. Um, solubility equilibria, just, you know, kind of the thing that I was talking about with the common ion effect. Like if you have, so if you have just a regular cup of water and you added calcium chloride to it, it'll completely like dissolve, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a cup of water and you put in the NaCl there first, there's already chloride ions there. So when you throw in the calcium chloride, 
the common ion effect is saying there's too much chloride here. So the calcium chloride isn't going to be as soluble. Okay, now, so factors that affect solubility. So precipitation and separation of ions. So the separation of, of ions, you know, like, you know, breaking it down into like Na plus, Cl minus. Uh, precipitation means it's going to turn, it's going to be like insoluble. It's going to turn into a solid. Then qualitative analysis, that's just the difference between qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative is measurable. Qualitative, like, okay, so like if we did an, like an acid-base titration, like um, quantitative will tell you how much percentage of that is an acid, how much percentage of that is a base. Qualitative is just, is it more acid or is it more base? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can move on. Any questions there? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, let's check out that next slide. So yeah, that's the thing that I was talking about. And yeah. uh, that's, this is a titration right here. So the first one is a strong base with strong acid. So, you know, you, you start off with something that has a high pH level and you add the strong acid. So it starts to go down, right? Mm -hmm. That equivalence point, it's the same amount of acid, same amount of base, perfectly neutralized. And then past that, it's more acids. So that's why X axis is the volume of the HCl added. Now for a weak acid and a strong base, right? Instead of it just immediately starting to go down, you have that thing. I, I can't see what they wrote. I think they said initial, but okay. we can, so I'll write it in the chat. I, I call that the lip of weakness because it's showing you that um, it like has this just a tiny little bit like of like an increase. It's like a delay almost. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the question. Titrated a weak base with a strong acid. Okay, so this is a good question. So if you have a strong acid and a strong base, the equivalence point would be at seven. Mm -hmm. Now. It's a weak base with a strong acid. So a weak base means that it's going to start off not too high of a pH, not as high as a strong base, right? So the pH is going to be basically like more towards the thing that's strong, so more towards a strong acid. So the equivalence point will be the pH for that will be below seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does that make sense? No, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so here's the common ion effect, right? So that first thing breaks down into sodium ion and then that other thing, acetate ion, right? So everything is dissociated, right? Yeah. Um, so here's like a weak acid or whatever. It gives off the, you know, H plus. And um, since there's already H plus in there, right? So if we mix sodium acetate, and acetic acid, which is that thing underneath, in the same solution, right? Mm -hmm. What's the common ion in this case? Um, the C2H3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that acetate ion. So since there's already acetate ion inside of that solution, um, it's not gonna dissociate completely. There's too much of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's gonna shift the equilibrium to the left. So, yeah, that's the Le Chatelier's aspect. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So, Henderson Hasselbach. So, if you're dealing with like weak acids or weak bases, mm -hmm. a lot of times, like in buffers, that's what you do. Um, so it, it, since it doesn't dissociate completely, so, okay, if it was a strong acid or a strong base, it would dissociate completely and your pH would be equal to the pKa. Mm -hmm. But since it's a weak acid it, or base, it's not going to dissociate completely. So it's going to be like equal to the pKa plus the log 
of the concentration of the conjugate base, which is the A minus, mm -hmm. over the uh, concentration of the acid, which is the HA. Right? OK. And so like basically, that'll work to basically add on to, uh, to the pKa, giving you a pH that would be higher than if you didn't have that, that value afterwards. Okay. So, all right, so if you want, so if you had that kind of question, right? So yeah, this is just, you know, doing the uh, kind of uh, uh, whatever, it, like math, but it's important to know that for a buffer, the range is generally gonna be plus or minus one for the pKa. And most of these are just like mm -hmm. ones. Oh, wait, uh, go back to that one. This one? Yeah. So, okay. so here's what the titration would look like for a buffer. So, see mm -hmm. that? how it's not like, um, like a, if it didn't have the buffer, it would just be like that S shape. Yeah. That's called a sigmoidal curve. Mm -hmm. And with a buffer, it's not going to immediately change like that. It's not going to be like um, symmetrical. So you're gonna have this long kind of plateau, this flat region where, because a buffer resists changes in pH, right? So the changes in pH, so that buffer region that you see, it's like, you know, it's like this kind of like, it's like, I'm not, it's not completely flat, of course, but it's flatter than, you know, normal. So mm -hmm. that region involves basically, like, that's the buffer region. It's, it's resisting changes in pH. And when we're dealing with buffer type things, um, there's also going to be uh, like a half equivalence point. Um, before, which is, you know, in the middle of the buffer region. Mm -hmm. So, so that's where we're going to start to have half. Uh, yeah. Make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. The, uh, the, does, that, does this one kind of make sense? Um, yeah. Okay. Just... All right, so yeah, factors that affect solubility. So, you know, common ion effect, uh, pH. Um, and then, okay, complexing agents slash ligands. So these are just things that surround like a metal cation to form a complex ion. So um, for instance, uh, for let's say, um, I'm gonna write down nickel. So like nickel two plus cation. Um, in solution, it's going to be uh, basically uh, surrounded by six H2O molecules. So can you open, so why don't you do this? Open up um, Google, mm -hmm. uh, Google image search. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you, can you see this right now? I think it's like sharing a different screen. Oh, okay. All right, uh, you know, never mind. Okay. okay. Let's just uh, move on through the slides. Um, I think more pH. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's what I was going to have you look up. Mm -hmm. um, so here's an example, right? So you have that 
So I said like nickel, that's a different example, but this is for chromium, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a cation in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, these aren't like actual bonds. They're kind of like weak ionic bonds. Like you can call them like salt bridges. But basically in, in, you know, when it goes into, so this is like, if you add the chromium uh, cation to, in a solution, in a solution of uh, ammonia, you'll have basically uh, six ammonia um, molecules surrounding like the chromium. Mm -hmm. So that's, we can call that like a solvation shell, right? Um, so, okay, and then the ligand, so we, we call those uh, things that are surrounding it called, uh, uh, we call them ligands. And um, a complex ion, that's like, you know, a metal, it's usually a transition metal. And it's, you know, bound to two or more ligands. Um, so, and it's, so, you know, again, it looks like they're, you know, connected by chemical bonds, but if that were true, it would be a neutral, atom right or neutral molecule yeah but they're not actually bonded so it still has a charge so it's still going to be so that so a complex will still have a charge so this still has a three plus charge mm -hmm. okay um, and then this is just Oh yeah, and KSP, so like, you know, anything with like the capital K just kind of means that it's um, like an equilibrium constant. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically Q is how it is, like maybe, in, yeah, like initially. So it would be the same thing, like a same, like, so if QSP, like it'll be same thing, like ratio of ions to, to a solid. Mm -hmm. um, and so if the Q is greater than the KSP, which is what it would be at equilibrium, mm -hmm. it means that you have too many ions, right? Yeah. Because, you know, it's a larger number and, you know, the ions you put as a numerator. So it's going to shift leftwards back to the solid to uh, reach equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And then if, it, if Q was less than KSP, it means that there's too much solid, so it's going to shift forwards. Um, and then if we say that you know it's too many ions, we say it's supersaturated. If there's too much solid, it's unsaturated. But if it's just right, we say it's saturated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the rest are just mm -hmm. problems. Okay. So we can work on like the, the problems. Yeah, I'll just share that. Mm -hmm. All right, so what can work, uh, what can make a good buffer solution? So what do you think about that first one? Um... Probably. So the first one, NaOH, is that a strong or weak? Um, is that an acid or a base? Um, base. Strong or weak? Uh, strong. KOH, acid or base? Uh, base. Strong or weak? strong okay so they're both strong and if you want a buffer solution you want a combination of strong and weak mm -hmm. so is that going to make a good buffer no correct um all right well what about b um b uh Oh, I should tell you that, wait, 
sorry, I have one screen, so I'm moving things around. Uh, so the uh, so that's just a methyl attached to like, you know, an ammonia, like mm -hmm. a, a mean group basically. And then the one on the right, it's like you know the same thing, but with uh, a Cl, right? So mm -hmm. if you drop that second part in to like a water solution, it would dissociate, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, so for, I'll write this in the chat. So um, here, a buffer solution is made by mixing a weak acid or base with its salt. Um, so the CH3, NH2 is a weak base. CH3 NH3 Cl turns into CH3 NH3 um, uh, positive plus, whoops, positive plus Cl minus. That's its salt. So B will make a good buffer solution. Okay. All right. Um, and then we have the, so we have C, right? Mm -hmm. um, now that one, um, so it's like basically a version of uh, whatever, um, phosphoric acid. Uh -huh. And that's a weak, weak acid. Um, and, you know, so, okay, phosphoric acid is, is H3PO4, mm -hmm. it's triprotic, so, you know, once it loses the first, you know, hydrogen, it'll turn into H2PO4 minus, then it loses the uh, second hydrogen to turn into HPO42 minus, right? Yeah. So, so, okay. So basically what we have here at first, it'll break down, you know, into Na plus and uh, H2PO4, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing would break down into, you know, two Na plus and then H, uh, one, just H1PO4. Oh, I should say H2PO4 uh, uh, minus and then HPO4 two minus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's a weak acid. Um, and yeah, you're mixing it with its uh, salt. So that'll make a good buffer solution. Um, okay, and then we have HBr and NaBr. Mm -hmm. So HBr, tell me about that. What is it? Is it an acid or base? Um, I believe it's a strong acid, maybe? Yep. Right. Okay. So yeah, right away, that's out. Mm -hmm. Won't make a good uh, buffer. Okay. What about uh, HCN and C uh, KCL? Um, HCN, I believe that's also. Well, uh, what's I, that? I'm not sure about that, but I know KCL is like a salt. Yeah, that's just uh, you know, that's just yeah, it's just a salt. There's mm -hmm. nothing that you know forms you know. Uh, uh, salt version of HCN. So mm. even if you didn't know if HCN was like a strong or weak acid or base, um, mm. that won't work because mm. they're not, you know, it's not a salt of it. Mm. Um, and then the next one, I. Oh, let me tell you this though. But if it was <laughs> HCN and NACN, <clears throat> It would make a good buffer uh -huh. because NACN is a salt of HCN. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one. Uh... Okay. Yeah. So that's basically a, whatever, acetic acid. So yeah, you have the, basically the uh, whatever, you have a salt of it and then the acid of it on the right. And it doesn't matter if it's on the left or right, right? <laughs> so, um, 
So yeah, that's, and also acetic acid is weak acid. Yeah. And uh, NaCH3COO would turn into Na plus and CH3COO minus, AKA the salt version of it. So that will make a good buffer. So I'll just highlight. Okay. okay. And like, do you have to explain for each of them? Um, Yes, I think so. Okay, but... so I'll write that for you in the chat. So for A, no, because they're both strong bases. Mm -hmm. B, yes, because it's a strong, I mean, it's a weak uh, base and the salt of the weak base. C, um, yes, because it's a weak acid and salt of the weak acid. Uh, D, no, because it's a strong acid. Uh, let's see. E, no, because it's a weak um, acid. And the salt of, and a salt that is not, it's like, um, and a completely different salt. And then uh, F, uh, yes, because it is the salt of a weak acid and the weak acid. And also for E, you could also say if the salt was KCN or NACN, it would be a good buffer if you want. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna have to do some math for the rest of these. Mm -hmm. So first of all, yeah, so for two, you know, the gram thing, we're gonna have to do some gram formula math stuff, but let's start off by saying, um, uh, you know, so, okay, basically, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the, um, so they so they sort of, they're giving us, okay, so they're giving us the volume of two liters and they're giving us of the solution and they're giving us the molarity of that solution. So, and uh, so, okay, let me write this down. So, um, so okay, whenever you see grams, um, you should know that, or you should instant, you should think instantly of moles why because in order to go from grams to moles and vice versa you use the gram formula mass aka the molar mass all right mm -hmm. so you know that's just how you should be thinking and also whenever you see volume and molar molarity you should also think instantly of moles. Why? Because molarity times vol volume gives you moles, right? Yeah. So, so basically what we're going to do is, um, so to find out the grams, to find out grams, we need moles. 
to find out moles, we, we uh, need molarity and volume. They gave us only molarity and volume. So that's what we use. They don't give us the moles and they don't give us the grams, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to find out grams, we need the moles. To find out moles, we need the molarity and volume. They gave us a molarity and volume, so that's what we do. So we take the molarity, 0.045, we multiply that by the volume, two liters, you get 0.09 moles. All right, now we need the gram formula mass of, of that compound. So uh, you're gonna need the periodic table here. Um, I forget exactly what it was for Na, but I know C is 12. So that's six times 12, um, which is uh, 72, I think, plus H, which is one times five plus 12 again for the carbon plus two times 16, which is for the oxygen plus. So what is the, the molar mass of sodium? Um, 23 plus 23. So mm -hmm. that should give you, so yeah. See if you can, yeah. you know, add that up. 77. 87, 89, plus 32. Um, 144? 144 grams per mole, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, we, since we have moles, right? We can find grams, right? Yeah. So if you do 144 grams per mole times 0 .0, 0 0.09 moles, right? That will give you the grams. Um, B. 12.96. Okay. Um, oh, wait, wait a second. Okay, so hold on. So, so they're asking, okay, so they're asking how many, okay, so it's okay. So basically what we have, but it, it is, is right in terms of what we have, but uh, they're asking how many of these grams must be added in order to make, because this is a titration or whatever, or mm -hmm. it's not really titration, you're making a buffer. So uh, so that the pH is a five, right? So, okay, so we're gonna do this. So, uh, so okay, the, uh, the Ka, we're gonna turn into pKa. Okay. So that's oh. like the negative log thing and I'll show you a shortcut to that. So, oh. so, um, so basically, so okay, like basically like pKa is equal to negative log of the Ka like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here's a shortcut. It's equal to that, the positive version of that exponent minus mm -hmm. the log of 6.3. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, what do you get for that? Um, 4.2. 4.2, okay. So basically that's what uh, our pKa is, right? Uh -huh. So now, um, so okay. So we're gonna use Henderson-Hasselbalch, right? Which is pH is equal to pKa uh, plus log of the A minus the conjugate base solution over the HA acid solution, right? Mm -hmm. So we want the pH to be five, right? 
the pKa we already have is 4.2. So mm -hmm. let's subtract the pKa on both sides, mm -hmm. right? So we do pH minus pKa, right, to get 0.8. So 0 yeah. 0.8 is equal to log of A minus over HA. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to take the anti-log of 0.8 mm -hmm. to get the concentration of A minus to HA. So yeah, what's the anti-log of 0.8? Oh, I guess it's just 10 to the 0.8 power. Yeah. Uh, 8 point, or sorry, 0 0.83. 0 0.83, you said? Yeah. All right, so now that's equal to the A minus concentration over the HA concentration. Mm -hmm. Now, since we have the HA concentration, Right, that's the acid, which is 0 0.045 molar. Uh -huh. Let's multiply that on both sides so we can solve for A minus concentration. Uh -huh. So take uh, the 0.83, multiply it by the 0.045, and tell me what you get. Um, 0 0.037. 0 0.037? Mm -hmm. All right, now that is the. A minus concentration. You see what I'm writing in the chat, right? Yes. Okay. So that's the A minus concentration, right? So we have uh, whatever the concentration of the Na blah blah blah, and uh, you know molarity a, uh, AKA. So you know now we do the same thing, right, to find uh, the moles of it. So multiply mm -hmm. it by the volume. So we're going to multiply it by uh, the two liters. Mm -hmm. So you should get 0. Uh, 0.074, um, I think, right? Um, you do 0. 0.037 but times two? Yeah. So what okay. is it? 0. 0.074. Four. Four was it? Yeah. So, okay. So that is equal to the moles of A minus. Mm -hmm. And now you multiply it by the molar mass. So... Uh -huh. So. That times 144 uh, grams per mole. And that is 10.75. Uh, 10.75, you said? Yeah. So, set, so that's the answer. Mm -hmm. You have to add 10.75 grams of the NaC6H5COO in order to make, you know, that solution with that pH. So that was a pretty good problem. It made us use, you know, everything. <laughs> so any questions in uh, that? No, that was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that uh, pKa, the pH trick, it's like on the MCAT, you know what the MCAT is, right? Uh -huh. So they don't let you use a calculator. So, you know, that's a trick that you know, I use and like teach my students to be able to do it fast without a calculator. Because mm -hmm. otherwise you'd have to put in your calculator with like negative log 6.3 times 10 to the negative five power, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's see the next one. So we have a solution of something volume, right? And mm -hmm. something molar, like molarity. Right away, what do you think of? What do you? Um, grams, moles. Mm. <laughs> so if you have molarity and volume, think of, well, what happens when you multiply molarity by volume? Um, you get moles. Yeah. So when you see volume and you see molarity, think moles. Okay. Because that means that you can find out the moles right away, right? Good. And then we see volume and molarity of another thing. So instantly we can figure out the moles for that as well. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying the KSP for... The, 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 for something else, KAF2 is that mm -hmm. they're asking, will a precipitate form? So, so, okay. So basically, so if you remember KSP, whoops, KSP is just the concentration of ions to the solid. Yeah. Right. And um, so 
Q, right, is basically the same thing, just not at equilibrium, right? So uh, Q, like if we get, so we're gonna basically solve for Q, okay? Mm. And basically if the Q is greater than KSB, a solid will form. Solid is the same thing as precipitate. All right? Yeah. So, okay. So we're going to find the Q and based on that, based compared to the KSB, we'll see if it precipitate forms, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, uh, so, okay, we have, um, so let's see. So, okay. And there's gonna be common ion effects here because the NAF, right, is gonna break apart into sodium and fluoride ions. And that's a common, ion, fluoride is a common ion to the CAF2, right? Yeah. And then the calcium nitrate will uh -huh. break apart and the calcium is a common ion to the Ka, uh, the CAF2, right? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be common ion effects from both of these guys. Mm -hmm. And that's going to kind of work against its solubility. So mm -hmm. my guess right away is that a precipitate won't form, but let's, uh, yeah, let's see. Okay. So, all right, let's uh, see. Okay. Um, ions. Okay. Here, let me see something for a sec. Oh, Q is called like the ion product. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, let, let me see something. KSB is a solubility product constant. Uh, all right, let me see something. Okay. So, all right, so for, all right, I'm gonna write NAF turns into NA plus and and F minus. Um, let me see. Oh, okay. You know what? So, okay. So since we're mixing, the volumes are going to in. Okay, the volumes are going to increase. All right, listen, so we're only going to be concerned with the common ions here. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, let's, uh, so, okay, add, add the 65.5 to the 29.9 and uh, tell me what you get. Uh, 91.4. Um, and divide that by a thousand. You should get 0.094. Yeah. So this is the V final. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's see. So okay. Now um 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 okay okay. So the um so okay F minus. Let's see. All right, so yeah, these are good problems, but they're very, very multi-step. So mm -hmm. this is what we do, okay? We're going to, so we're gonna use the V final a little later, but first we need to find the moles of each of the things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do this. So, so basically 0. 0.0655 liters is the volume for the NAF. Uh, and multiply that by the molarity, which is just uh, 0. 0.012. And uh, then, yeah. That's uh, 0. 
seven eight six. Uh, point zero zero, uh, zero what? Seven eight six. Okay, that's the moles of F minus. All right. Mm -hmm. Now do the same thing for the calcium nitrate. So you would do point oh nine. Uh, so point oh two five nine times point oh two. And tell me what you get. Um. Uh. Point zero 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 five one. Moles of calcium. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, okay, now we find, um, okay, wait, let's see. KSB of that is that will precipitate form. Number of ions over number of solid. Okay, so, all right, so now for each of these moles that we wrote, so let's see. So um, we're gonna find the concentration of each of these, uh, wait. Oh, we're gonna find the new concentration of these in that new solution, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, wait, which is like that combined volume, uh, mm -hmm. 0.094, so okay. So basically, you know, so, so, okay, concentration of F minus is going to be like the 0 0.000786, you know, moles of F minus over point, um, where's the, oh, point oh nine four, you know, uh, liters of, you know, the final, uh, you know, uh, in the final solution. Mm. Um, for that, I have 0 0.0086. All right. So, okay. So that's going to be the F minus concentration. Now do the same thing for, um, for calcium. So you have 0 0.0008581 uh, moles of calcium, like whatever, two plus over point oh nine four liters and uh, what tell me what you got uh, point zero zero five seven all right and that'll be basically the uh ca2 uh plus concentration mm -hmm. then i'll rewrite the point zero zero eight eight six is the f minus concentration um all right so let's see so basically um so then the Q will be basically the product of that. Mm -hmm. So the Q here is going to be, you know, the product of the, the two uh, concentrations. So if you do 0 0.0057 times 0 0.0086, you would get your Q. Okay. Um, Um, and that would be 4.9 to like the negative fifth power. Um, okay. So now, uh, that's Q and KSB is 3.9 E negative 11. So what's larger, um, Q or KSB? Uh, the Q. The Q is larger, right? So mm -hmm. that means that, um, the amount of ions that are produced, uh -huh. right? There's going to be like a larger, there's too many ions essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's going to basically like uh, work, work uh, basically going backwards. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So since Q is greater than KSP, a precipitate will form. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So yeah, these questions, they, they're very, very multi-step and complex, yeah. but uh, 
but they're good because you you learn a lot from them. So any questions with that so far? Um, no, I think that. that All right, good. and you've been writing down like the stuff that I wrote in the chat, like in your notes and stuff, yeah. like how to do it. Okay, cool. All right, let's see this one. Uh, let's see, calculate the pH of a buffer containing that much of that and that much of that. Mm -hmm. So right away, you know, so if you see generally, if you see like a CL or, you know, some, some, you know, alkali metal or whatever, it's mm -hmm. the salt version of it. Right. Yeah. All right. So, so, okay. After, okay. So the calculate, right, so this is going to have multiple answers. So pH of a buffer containing that and that, right. Um, okay. And then what's the pH after that is added. Okay. And then the pH after that. Okay. So the first part, pH of a buffer containing that and that. Do we, do we get valid? Wait. Oh no, that's just KB for something else. pH of a buffer containing that and that. Um, okay, you know what? We could do this. Um, so, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So it, it's, so that since the thing on the right has two H's, mm. that's the acid. Yeah. And then the thing on the left has one H, uh -huh. that's the conjugate base. Uh -huh. So, so, okay. So the difference between their um, concentrations is essentially the concentration of the H plus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to be 0.25 minus, uh, well, whatever, minus 0.15, which is just 0.1. So mm -hmm. the pH of 0.1, right, is just going to be, well, it's going to be 1E negative 1, which is just negative 1. Mm -hmm. pH should be, uh, let me make sure. Because they don't give us the Ka here. So, oh, you know what? I got it. We can, okay. So they don't give us a Ka, but but we're gonna just have to find the Ka. So basically what we're going to do is this. We're going to, um, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. So first Ka is equal to um, basically the uh, H plus concentration times the conjugate base concentration over the uh, entire like, you know, uh, acid concentration. Whoops, whoops. All right, and what that means is um, the HA, by the way, is the, um, you know, the 0.15, because that's the acid, All right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, the, uh, okay, so the H, so the HA is going to be the 0.15 molar, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the acid, okay. The A minus the conjugate base is going to be the 0.25 molar. And the H plus concentration is going to be the difference between the two, which is 0.1 molar. Mm -hmm. So we got those values and you plug it into what I wrote for Ka up there. Um, I get 1.6. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, 0.16. Okay, 
That's the KA, right? Mm -hmm. 0.16. Okay. So now, okay, so we got the KA. So what we do now, let's see. Wait, all right, you know what? The K is gonna come into play later on. Uh, I just realized that pH of the buffer alone could just be the, well, let's see. All right, let's hold off that first question for a bit because it should be the uh, point 0.1 mm -hmm. or, or rather, okay, so it should be the, uh, so point 0.1 is the same thing as one E negative one, which is then, you know, the negative log of that. Oh wait, the negative log of that is plus one. Okay, no, that makes sense. Sorry, we got, I got that, you know, we got that answer before, but um, since it's the, since I forgot to put the negative part, like I got negative one as the pH mm -hmm. and in my head that doesn't seem right because that's too low of a pH. That mm -hmm. means it's like a strong acid. Yeah. So, you know, it has to be a weak one. So, but it's negative log, so it's positive one. So, okay, mm -hmm. the pH of the buffer should be, so pH of the buffer is one. All right, now what's the pH after 0.01 moles of HCl is added to one liter of the buffer without changing the volume? So we're adding a strong acid to it. Mm -hmm. The pH is gonna decrease right away, we know that. Uh, just a matter of by, uh, by how much, right? So essentially um, now the pKa is going to, going to come into effect. So uh, with the Henderson Hasselbach. So basically, you know, the Henderson, like pH is equal to pKa plus log. Okay, so basically, you know, okay, we're adding that strong acid to it. So that's gonna dissociate completely. So the log actually isn't even gonna be a factor, but basically what we're going to have is, um, so we're adding, all right, and it's nice that they give us one liter because then we don't necessarily have like the math is just going to be equal, like easy, like, because mm -hmm. normally we'd have to divide moles over liter to find the molarity. But since it's one liter, it's just going to be the same thing as moles. So, okay. The uh, H plus concentration for the HCl that you add is 0.01. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so that means that the total, so we add that to the H plus concentration that we had before. So, 0 0.1 molar plus 0 0.01 molar. That gives us 0 0.11 molar as, uh, you know, the total H plus, right? Okay. And then, you know, the pH of that is just going to be, you know, negative log of 0 0.11, which is, you know, going to be basically 1.1 E negative 1 which is net, uh, one minus log of 1.1. Um, and I get 0.95. 0.95, yeah. So that'll be the pH after you add, you know, that much HCl. And that makes sense because you're adding an acid, so the pH should decrease, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to add, so this is independent from part B, so as if part B didn't happen, so we didn't add the acid now, and now we're adding this much base to it. Mm -hmm. So pH is going to increase. Um, and since, you know, we had to solve for the Ka for the previous one, but this one, since it's a base, they're giving us the KB. So we're going to take that KB, we're going to turn it into PKB, right? Mm -hmm. So anytime there's a lowercase p in front of it, it's the same thing. It's negative log of that same number. Mm -hmm. And then that trick, 
let's see if you remember the trick. So 7.4 E negative four, what mm -hmm. do we do? Is it four minus log 7.4? Perfect, very smart, good. Thank <laughs> you. All right, so yeah, do that. Um, 3.1 is what I get. 2.1? Okay, now that is the PKB. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, so okay. So PKB is gonna be, um, whoops. So, all right, so PKB, um, I mean, that's going to be more related to, oh, wait, um, okay, wait, I think we could do this without what I was going to say. Um, let me double check here. So, all right, so check this out. Okay, so PKB is going to be related to, so we have like PH, but this is going to be POH. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, let's see. Okay, so, all right, so, okay. Uh, since it's strong, the PKB is gonna be equal to the POH and POH plus the PH should give you, um, well, PKW, which is just 14. So that's how we can, whatever. All right, that's how we can do that. So um, let's see. Okay, so, all right, so just to, let's see, three point, so the POH is 3.1. So the P, okay, so then here we go. So POH plus PH is equal to, um, well, PKW, which is just the, I'm just gonna say it's just 14. Mm -hmm. The KW comes from the, that's basically just the auto ionization of water. Yeah. Okay, so it, it equals uh, 14, right? So mm -hmm. since we have 3.1 as POH, 14 minus 3.1 is going to give you the pH. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that's 10.9. Yeah. So you might be asking, or it's good, healthy, uh, uh, smart for you to ask yourself, why when they added the strong acid, did it change just a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But when you added the strong base, it changed substantially more, mm -hmm. right? Um, why do you think? Um, I think probably because like the solution already was like, already quite strong as it was. So like adding a strong um, acid with or wasn't that much of like a change, but like compared to adding like a strong base, it like changed it kind of drastically. So like- uh, yeah. How much of the acid did we add and how much of the base did we add? Um, oh yeah, well we did add like four More. times as much right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we added four times as much and uh also what did the um so the ph of the buffer started off more acidic anyway right yeah so when we add acid to it it's going to do what a buffer does which is resist changes mm -hmm. Now, when we add a base to it, it will also resist changes, but we added four times as much of the base. Okay. So, yeah, so it's good, like, when you're taking a test like this and you're doing these types of problems, like, it's good, like, of course, step one is, like, you know, to be able to, like, do the math, but how do you know that 
your number, your math is correct, right? Yeah. So that's, you know, like a sanity check, like to be like, all right, does this make sense with the concept? Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah, I was looking at that and I was like, wow, that's a substantial change. Because when we added the acid, it went from one to 0.95, barely a difference. When we added the base, yeah. it went from uh, one to, uh, what was it, like, ten, uh, like 10 to 10.9, uh, uh, right? Yeah. So how does that make sense? It shouldn't make sense, but we added four times as much base. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Um, all right. Is that the next one? Yeah. All right. So we have volume and molarity immediately. What do you think of? Most. Good. Um, titrated with, you know, that much of the, uh, whatever NaOH. Mm -hmm. So HCl strong acid, right? Mm -hmm. NaOH strong base. Uh, yes. So is this going to be a buffer problem or no? No. No, good. So good. And yeah, buffer problems are way more complicated. So, you know, there's a, a lot more steps involved. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a lot more straightforward. Um, so, okay. Uh, what is the initial pH of the HCl? Um, okay. So basically, um, uh, so if it's a strong, you know, acid pH, will equal the pKa. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is we need to find the Ka, turn it into pKa, and that'll equal the pH. Mm -hmm. Now, Ka, do you remember what that would be? Um... So let me write this. So K anything will equal basically the product over the reactants. Yeah. All right. So if it's KSP solubility, it'll be ions because those are the products mm -hmm. over the solid, which is you know the reactant. So mm -hmm. that's just true for everything. It's from something called the law of mass action. All right. So mm -hmm. anyway, so Ka, right? So okay. So for HCl, tell me how you know that works. What does that turn into? Um, it would uh, go from a CL, like a CL ion. Mm -hmm. and, and? Um, just H plus? Correct. Okay. So, okay. So the uh, reactant is what? Um, the reactant would just be uh, HCl. Mm -hmm. And the products are H plus and Cl minus, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So then we can just do products over reactants and we could get our answer, right? So, so we got Ka is equal to, so uh, H plus concentration times uh, Cl minus concentration over the HCl concentration. So that's going to be basically 0.1 times 0.1 over 0 0.1. 0.1's cancel, so it's just 0 0.1, which is just 1 E negative 1. Mm -hmm. Now the pKa, so that's equal to the Ka. So the pKa would be what? Um, just the anti -law. So like use that trick? I said that would be one minus log one. Good. And then that would What's be... log one? Oh, uh, that's, is that just zero? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, pH 
is equal to pKa, which is just one. Yeah. All right. Now, so, okay. Uh, initial pH of HCl, yeah, that's, so that's the answer for that. <laughs> initial pH of NaOH. So this is where we do the KB thing, turn it into pKB, set it equal to pOH, and then do 14 minus pOH to get pH. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So we got so basically, KB, whoops, K, yeah, K, KB is equal to 0.1. And now KB is equal to POH, which is equal to 0.1 then pH is equal to 14 minus POOH. So pH is going to be 13.9. Right? Make sense? Yeah. So by the way, uh, NaOH, is a much stronger base than HCl is a strong acid, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. so so that also is a, uh, an explanation for why in that previous problem, right, we had such a substantial change when we added the NaOH uh -huh. compared to when we added the HCl. So like the strength of HCl is less than the strength of NaOH. They're both considered strong, like HCl is considered a strong acid and uh, NaOH is considered a strong base, but NaOH is, is stronger at what it does than mm -hmm. HCl is. So yeah, um, okay. So yeah, that also helps us, you know, explain why, you know, that previous problem was the way it was. Okay, so that's our answer for the for B, the initial pH of the NaOH, 13.9. Right? Okay. Now, what's the pH after 20 ml is added of the, you know, sodium hydroxide? Mm -hmm. So, and then the rest of these are just uh, you know, different you know, numbers of what we add. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So basically what we're doing now is we're going to basically, uh, you know, we're going to basically, let's see. We're going to look at basically the moles of these things. Mm -hmm. So let's start off by finding the moles of HCl. Uh, Um, 0.005. Okay. Because you did a 0 0.05 times 0 0.1? Yeah. Okay, good. So 0 0.005 you said, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see the moles of, you know, 20 ml of the NaOH. Um, yeah, that's point zero zero two. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's see. That means that we have 
Okay, so that means that there are still, if you could imagine, you know, like thing that's dropping it down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that means that there's still going to be 0 0.003 moles of HCl like left. Mm -hmm. So 0 0.003 moles of HCl. And since they're asking for a pH, right? We just, you know, use that to find, you know, so, okay. So we're now, that means we just have to find the H plus concentration now, right? Uh -huh. So that's gonna be 0 0.003, you know, moles of HCl over, and it's gonna be the total volume, right? So over 0 um, 0 0.07 liters, right? Cause 50 ml plus 20 ml. And then I get 0 0.043. All right, so that's the H plus concentration, right? Mm -hmm. So that's basically 4.3 E negative two, right? Yeah. So now the pH, tell me how we're gonna do that. Um, we just do negative log of that. Yep, and the trick? Um, two minus log four point three. Yep. And that's one point four. All right, there we go. So yeah, that's C. All right, now we're gonna do that with forty five mLs. So basically, we're going to keep doing it until you're going to see probably around 49 mLs equivalence point, right, where it's going to be like equal. Um, and then, you know, probably at 100 mLs, it's going to be more NaOH. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be higher. So, OK, <laughs> so let's uh, do, you know, the same kind of steps for, you know, the next thing. So why don't you walk me through it? OK, so the moles for HCl uh, will be the same. It'll also be Correct. 0 0.005. Mm -hmm. And then, so for NaOH, we would multiply the new volume, uh, 45 uh, milliliters with um, mm -hmm. the molarity. Mm -hmm. And then that would get you um, 0 0.0045. Mm -hmm. and then, and, um, and then you would uh, kind of get the difference of that, of those two moles. Mm -hmm. And then that would be, I believe, 0 0.0005. Zero and then that's uh, moles of HCl. So then you would put that over the combined volume. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> I was going a little too fast there. So forget <laughs> the last like two things I said. <laughs> so, OK. Um, um, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, 0 0.0005 uh, divided by, what is this, 45, uh, 0. 0 0.095 liters, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, what do you get? And then I get... Point zero zero five three. All right. And then we do... So that's equal to that. And then... <laughs> Negative log, tell me the trick. Um, three minus log 5.3. Mm -hmm. That would be 2.3. Uh, wait, what was the answer? Uh, 2.3. All right, so that's the, the pH or D. Mm -hmm.
All right, so see, we went from 1.4 to 2.3, all right? And then we're gonna do 49 ml. So it's a tiny difference from, you know, from 20 to 45, we increase it more than double, but from 45 to 4, 49, we only increase it by five. And I think I know why, because there's that, because that sigmoidal like curve it's like tiny, 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 tiny little differences, right? Tiny, tiny, tiny little differences, and then boom, shoots up. Yeah. And then it, you know, so that's the S kind of shape. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what's going to happen with the 49. But, you know, let's see. So uh, it's okay. Walk me through it again. Um, okay, so uh, HCL moles are still um, 0 0.005. Mm -hmm. And then uh, moles of NaOH with that volume would be uh, 0 0.0049. All right. And then, so that would get you a total of 0 0.00. Zero one moles of uh, HCl left, and then dividing that by the volume, that would be um would be point zero nine nine. And then, so the concentration would be. Oh, wait, I thought you did that. So you got 0 0.0001 moles of HCl, right? Left, right? Yeah. And then you divided it by the total volume, which is 0 0.099 liters, right? Yes. Um, and then what do you do when you divide that? What do you get? Um, I get 0 0.001. All right, good. Which is just one e negative three. Mm -hmm. So, then, uh, yep. three minus uh, log one, and that's just three. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, I guess I was expecting that's where it would jump up, but I guess not. Mm -hmm. So, all right, the <laughs> last one, hundred mLs, mm -hmm. right? So, same yeah. deal. So you would get like the moles of NaOH. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then like I got point zero zero five moles NaOH after. Uh, did you do point one times point one liters? Yeah, and then um, so then I got that moles, and then that's point oh one moles, right? Yeah. And then would you uh, get the difference of the HCl? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then what, what did you get? What was the difference? Uh, 0 0.005. Wait, uh, 0 0.005 was the initial moles of HCl. Yeah. So subtract that from by uh, 0 
you should get like a negative number. Is it just negative point zero zero five? Oh, okay, okay. Because point one is larger than point zero zero five, right? Yeah. So it would be negative a negative number. Okay, so you get negative point zero zero five. So that's how many moles of HCl there is now. So all of them have been used up. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, then, uh, then what do we do? Um, divide by the combined volume. Yeah, so divided by um, 0.15. Negative 0.033. Uh, yeah, negative, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's the whatever, the new concentration, right? Mm -hmm. So then, so okay, that's going to be um, negative 3.3 uh, E, negative 1. So 1 minus log of negative 3.3, .3, which is essentially just, well, If you get something weird, there's a uh, yes. way to do it. Yeah. All right, yeah, because we can't really work with negative molarities. So this is where we have uh -huh. to switch on to the pOH. Mm -hmm. So okay, this is what we'll do. So um, so okay, all so okay, all of the HCl is used up though. So that's why <laughs> we can't really use uh, that that uh, part. So uh, let's see. Um, Okay, so all of the, uh, all right, so all of that's used up. So let's see, um, let's see, let's see. All right, negative 0 0.005, uh, let's see, let's see. All of that's used up. So, okay, if all of that's used up, so th now we just have to find the excess uh, NaOH then. So, okay, do this then. 0 0.01 minus 0 0.005. You'll just get 0 0.005 again. Yeah. So, um, so okay. 0 0.00, .00 okay, okay. So, okay. 0 0.005 is equal to the moles of NaOH. Um, now, divide that by, you know, the total... Um, uh, uh, volume and uh, oh yeah I guess you'd get pretty much the same thing yeah. what which was uh, 0 0.33 you said yeah okay so now we're going to find pOH which is you know so okay so do 1 minus log of 3.3 .3. I get point Four eight. That's equal to the pOH now. Mm -hmm. Now to find pH, what do we do? Um, you would so you would do fourteen minus point four eight. Correct. I believe that's thirteen point five two. Um. Yeah. So yep, that's F. So, so yeah, if it was like, so, you know, starting point is our answer for A, and then it goes up a little, answer for B, I mean, uh, no, answer for C, and then it goes up a little again, answer for D, goes up a little again, answer for E, shoots up, and that's our answer for F. Yeah. So that's the uh, titration right there. Everything makes sense there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, let's do six. 
All right, now this is going to be a little bit more annoying because that's a weak acid right there. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to have to use some like Henderson Hasselbach stuff because it's, it's citrated with a strong base now. So, uh, okay, at least they tell us the Ka. So we don't have to calculate that. So, okay, what's the initial pH of the acid? All right. So, uh, yeah, so we can do this. Um, so we're going to use Henderson Hasselbach. So, uh, so let's start off by getting the Ka and turning it into a pKa. I think you know how to do that. I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab something. Okay. So, uh, pKa, you would do the uh, five minus log of one point eight. What did you get? I got four point seven. All right. Now. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's the pKa, initial pH of the acid, one. Oh, you know what? Okay, wait. Um, okay, so Ka. So Ka would just be, all right, wait, that would be that times that. All right, we're, we're going to have to do, okay, so the pKa, that's going to be used for the later ones, but okay, so Ka is equal to uh, H plus, whoops. All right, okay. A, uh, H plus times. CH3COO minus. Okay. So, um, so that would be basically like, because that's what it would uh, dissociate into. So, and there'll be equivalent amounts. Let's see. All right. They'll, okay. Wait. Sorry. Um, here. So, okay, Ka would actually be that divided by the concentration of CH3COOH. <laughs> right? Now, H plus concentration and CH3CO minus concentration is going to be the same. Uh -huh. All right. And then the CH3COOH on the bottom, that's going to be the uh, 0.1. So, uh, so let's do it like this. So Ka is equal to x squared over 0 0.1. So our Ka value, we multiply by 0 0.1 which is basically just going to be 1.8 E negative uh, six. All right, and then take the square root of that to find H, I mean, to find uh, X. Uh, I got 0 0.0013. All right, so that's going to be equal to the H plus concentration. So that's 1.3 E negative 3. 
So three minus log of 1.3, that will be your answer. That will be 2.8 or 2.9. All right, so that's uh, the pH, initial pH of the acid. Okay, now what happens after we add 10 ml of NaOH? Yeah. And then, you know, after 50 ml, after 100, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know what? We may not even have to use Henderson Hasselbach here. Yeah, no, we actually don't have to, because this isn't a buffer. This is just a weak, this is just a titration of a weak acid with a strong uh, base. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna do it the same way we did like the previous problem. Right, so, um, so okay. So basically, let's see. Um, you know, NaOH, we could use the uh, whatever, the, Nah. Okay, so uh, let's see. All right, so let's find out the moles of the acetic acid. That's the CH3COOH. Mm -hmm. So that's just uh, 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 again, which is just 0 0.01 moles of, you know, acetic acid. And uh, um, okay, and then 0 0.1 times 0 0.01 will be the moles of the NaOH added. So that's going to be 0 0.001 moles of NaOH. Oh, wait, crap, crap. Sorry. Moles of acetic acid aren't what's important. Moles of the H plus is what's important. So the moles of H plus, so hold on. So 0 0.0013 is the H plus concentration. Okay, so, okay. H plus concentration was 1.3 E negative three, right? or just 0 0.0013, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so, all right, so we gotta, wait, what did, did we get? Okay, so, all right, so we just need to, all right, so we're gonna use the moles of H plus. So that's the concentration of H plus, multiply that by uh, 50, um, ML, wait a second, let me see something. So yeah, multiply that by, uh, okay, so multiply that by 0 0.05 to get the moles of H plus. That's what we're gonna use. Uh, would it be 0 0.1? Uh, 0.1 uh, volume? Yeah. So like, this is just like, so the prop, this is like the previous problem, except mm -hmm. the previous problem, HCl is equivalent to H plus because it completely dissociates. Uh -huh. However, for this one, it doesn't completely dissociate. So instead of using the 0.1 molar acetic acid concentration, uh -huh. we're going to use the, the H plus concentration because it's different. It doesn't completely dissociate. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're going to be using, so it's going to be like the previous one, but we're going to be using the, you know, H plus concentration. So, all right. So that times the uh, 0 0.1 uh, should give you 0 0.00013, right? Moles yeah. of H plus, right? <clears throat> okay. So, all right, so then, um, okay, and then we found moles of NaOH, which is 0 0.001. 
So what do you get for moles of NaOH? That, that should be point, oh wait, point 0.1 times point zero 0.01 should give you point zero zero 0.001 moles of NaOH, right? Yeah. All right, now we subtract these guys. So point zero 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 0.00013 minus point zero zero 0.001. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be an excess of NaOH, I believe already. Yeah. So, so, okay. So we're going to do the POH stuff. So mm -hmm. 0.001 minus 0 0.00013. Mm -hmm. What do you get for that? Um, 0.00087. Okay. That's how many moles of NaOH there are. Mm -hmm. So already, you know, it's going to be, you know, already all of the H plus has been uh, has been used. So okay, that's uh, the moles of NaOH divided by the total volume. So that would be uh, 110. Okay, so 0.11 uh, liters. And that's 0 0.0079. All right, that is the uh, the um, uh, you know like OH minus concentration. Now POH is just going to be you know the same. So okay, that's seven point nine e negative three. So three minus log seven point nine is going to give you the POH. Uh, it's two point one. All right, and then fourteen minus that would be thirteen. I mean. 12.9, wait, yeah, 11.9. Um, right. oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. 11.9, that's the new pH. And uh, yeah, that should make sense because it's a weak acid, right? Mm -hmm. And you're adding a very strong base to it. So even after 10 mLs, it already jumps up to uh, what you said. 11.9 yeah. right mm -hmm. okay and then just the same with the rest basically what's up and then just the same with the rest of the volumes kind of basically right uh yeah pretty much yeah. so like um yeah just uh you yeah you have to remember to use like the uh uh the h plus concentration and not the acetic acid concentration mm -hmm. and then you have to you know instead of subtract you're going to subtract it from the NaOH concentration mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to set that equal to POH and you're going to subtract that from 14 so that's what you'll do okay. so um, are we like out of time or something no okay did, did you want to do the rest of these or what do you want uh, to do? yeah I can do them out like right, with three right here. Okay, so uh, let's do it. So then, so okay, we got uh, so okay, zero point one times zero point zero five to get the for C to get the moles of NaOH there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That should be zero point zero five, mm -hmm. right? And then. Subtract that by 0 0.00013. Mm -hmm. um, and then I get 0 0.0049. All right, so that's the uh, moles of the OH. Mm -hmm. And let's divide that by the total volume, which is going to be 0 0.15, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then I get 0 0.032. All right. So 3.2 E negative 2. Um, so then 2 minus log of 3.2. That's 1.5. 1.5, you said? Yeah. That's the POH. And then the pH would just be 14 minus that. So that should be what, 12.5? Yeah. Yep. 
There you go. <laughs> and then for D, it'll be 0. 0.1 times uh, 0. 0.1, which is 0. 0.01. Uh, 0.01 uh, moles of NaOH, that is. Mm -hmm. 0.01 minus 0 0.00013, right? Yeah. Mm. I get 0 0.0099. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's how many moles of a, you know, OH minus there is. We divide mm -hmm. that by total volume, which is now 0 0.2. Mm -hmm. And then I get 0 0.049. So that's 4.9 E negative 2. 2 minus log 4.9. And then I get 1.3 for the POH. And then 14 minus that. Wait a sec. Because for the previous one, you got a 1.5 for the POH. Yeah. This one is small, smaller. Oh, wait, yeah, that makes sense. P <laughs> All right, yeah, it makes sense. P, okay, so, okay. What did you get? Um, I got 12.7 for the P. So, uh, 12.7, you said? Yeah. All right, that's the uh, pH. That's the answer for D. And then, and then that last one. So you do the point uh, one times the point oh, oh wait point one oh one. That's just going to be point oh one oh one. Yeah. And then uh, okay, and then you know you multiply that or uh, no 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 you uh, subtract that by point zero 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 one three. Um. And then I guess to make the answer a little different, maybe 0 0.00997. Oh, wait, say that again. Um, 0 0.00997. All right. And divide that by 0 0.201. Uh, that would be uh, 0 0.049. All right, 4.9 E negative two, two minus log of 4.9. And then I get 1.3 again. So that would just be about 12.7. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. It's just, you know, a tiny little increase. And, you know, we've already made that jump from, uh, like, from the beginning. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Any, uh, any of those? So, any, any questions here? Any, any of that make any questions? Uh, no, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um... I don't think so. I can go back to the. Mm -hmm. uh, power. When's your uh, test? Um, it's on Friday. Okay. How was your last test? How have your previous tests been? It was. It was good. Yeah. Was... Okay. What types of problems have you been getting wrong? Um, I think I th I think the last test mm -hmm. it was really just one of them. I rounded wrong mm -hmm. so like, it was, like, like uh, tell me was, like what do you mean 
he was kind of picky like this time about like the like rounding so like to the decimal places mm -hmm. so like it was right but the like decimal places weren't so like what uh you're talking is this like significant digits or yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah yeah those can be annoying um so like uh what do you remember like exactly what it was like like what the um i can maybe pull it up for you i can see mm -hmm. if i can share this. yeah generally speaking you want to use like as much digits as possible until the very end then you go by whatever has okay. the lowest amount of significant yeah. digits or sig figs whatever uh, okay. I'll share my screen. Um, so, yeah, so this um, test said rounding and mistakes in calculation. Mm -hmm. So, for that, oh, wait, shoot, I might have to go on. Okay, one second. Um, I don't know why the files never open in Safari. Uh huh. Do you have like Chrome or something? Yeah, I'm signing in. Okay. And I have to stop. You could try one of those apps down there. Like those connected apps. I'll share the okay. And then so rounding and then mistakes and calculation. Um, so yeah, I just rounded this wrong. I think it's supposed to be three. It's supposed to be significant figures. Let's see. Um or like two decimal places. Oh, I see. Okay, so basically like well, I don't really know what uh, what the question is. There's no way to see like the test, right? Um, no, I don't think I have that. So. Okay, so from what I see, you have you know six, like you know, zero point six five five, like three, whatever there. Yeah. And then uh, for your answer, you probably should have had like you know two point zero uh, zero zero maybe. But I also see a yeah. KA of 3.2, which is two sig figs. But yeah, I guess they wanted, wait, is this rounding or this is it rounding? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, this one. So, okay, there's two sig figs. So the sig figs are right. Um, but uh -huh. yes, when you round it, like it turns into, since it's a five, it'll turn into 0. 0.7. Mm -hmm. So then you do, let's see, what are you trying to find? What's that? Is that X or something? No, what is that? Oh, oh, I see. So then if you did, uh, let's see, 0. 0.7 minus, what is that? 3.2 E negative. Is there a way for you to zo zoom in or something? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. That, that's a lot better. But yeah, so uh, yeah, more so, but you could just scroll up a bit. Oh, oh sorry, it's really sensitive. So I see 3.2, what, oh, to the power of, is that a negative five? What is that? Yeah, I think that's five, yeah. Oh, positive five? No, no, negative five. Negative five? Okay. Yeah. So like if you did 0. 0.7 minus that instead of, so, okay, 6.55, all right, so let me see. So that's 6.55 E neg one. So, 
okay, if you subtract it, um, wait, wait, no, I'm looking at, so that's part of the Ka, so never mind. So this is the entire calculation I see. So it's 3.2, okay, that entire thing, uh, and then divided by that denominator, okay. Uh, the numerator, what's the numerator? Um, the numerator is 3.2 times uh, 10 to the negative fifth um, squared. Oh, okay. So, okay, you have the negative five. Okay, so on the top and on the bottom. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, that should be like something like whatever, like nine something times 10 or nine something e negative uh 12 i guess mm -hmm. and on the bottom you'd get so okay since i don't like you know whatever have a calculator <laughs> like <laughs> uh i'm just going to so i believe what and does it does it tell you what that right answer is because i think what you would have had to do so if you did that entire calculation like what would you get um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I just get a really big. I can't see it. Can you read it? It's basically just to, like point zero 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 zero. It's two, uh, basically two to the ten, or two to the negative ninth power. Um. So wait, wait. Tell me exactly what it says. It's a uh, point zero 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 two. Oh, wait, hold on. I, all right, show me that on the screen again. I just figured out that I could double click. Okay, let me see. Uh, oh, it's weird that it doesn't just, um, so, okay, let me see. Let me just count. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it should be two times to the negative nine. What the hell? So, okay, so I'm going to ask you one. <laughs> Last thing. So, what do you if you use instead of 0.655, if you use um, 0.7? Then it would be the same thing, but one. Show me, show me it on the screen. Yeah, all right. So there you go. So your answer would have been one e negative nine. Uh -huh. Yeah. So okay. So yeah. So I guess you would have had to round the point six five five to point seven, mm -hmm. and then you would have gotten one e negative nine. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then. What's the other one? We can look at the other one and then we can uh, end because we like kind of started late. So, yeah. Uh, so number four. Four, and that was just mistakes and calculations. You mm -hmm. don't really say what. I mean, mm -hmm. there's kind of a lot going on here because it was one of those <laughs> ones where you had to do the quadratic formula. Really? So, Jeez. Yeah. Okay. So, honestly, I could have messed up anywhere here. <laughs> Yeah. Do they give you more paper? Because it seems like you're kind of like, you know, stuffing oh, a lot. No, yeah, that's just what I, that's to myself. I have as much paper as I need. Yeah. I just yeah try to like, you know, give yourself a lot more room. For yeah. Because yeah, I exactly. see, and then like, you know, for the things in scientific notation, put them in like, you know, brackets and stuff. 
Yeah. Um, so, you know, like what is, so quadratic formula is that like B plus or minus uh, radical uh, B squared minus four uh, AC was it or four? Four AC, but I just. Over, uh, over two. Um, two. Over two what? A. 2a okay um all right yeah <laughs> so yeah just uh give yourself a lot more room for that so you can do it so because i think like you know the mistaken calculation wouldn't have happened if you like you know gave yourself more room yeah because um a lot of things you know there could have been like a mistake in like what you inputted into the calculator especially since there's so many different like uh, operations happening. Like you're gonna need to put a lot of things inside parentheses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So for that one, just yeah, start to yeah, give yourself as much space as possible. Like I would give myself like half of the page for that. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So for and then for the previous one, yeah. If you just if you rounded that, you would have gotten you know one e neg mm -hmm. nine, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, yeah, if you can, like it's also useful, I guess. Okay, so if, yeah, so your test is on Friday, you said? Yeah. And uh, it's gonna be on the stuff that we worked on, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you feel like ready for that? Uh, yeah, usually uh, after I, I kind of just go through the review again by myself, mm -hmm. make sure I remember what we talked about. Okay. Like look over the sides again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. All right. So. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> uh. All right. So you're you're good. Yeah, I think so. I think it's okay. All right. So. Yeah. Practice. 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 Um. You know. When you see molar, yeah, like no, like you know, when you see molarity and in volume and stuff like that. Um, yeah, go over the problems that we went over because those problems are pretty hard uh, because you have to do a lot of like steps, right? To, yeah. to be able to answer them. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. practice them and uh, good luck. If any uh, other questions, you know, let me know. Okay, perfect. Right. Thank you so much. All right, no problem. Take care. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you too. Bye.